What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for episode six of Hit the Books podcast. We're here this week to talk to you about the week six of the NFL season, as well as some NHL talk. Looking forward to it with the boys, Tyler Huffnagel, Michael Mackey, and myself, Jesse Cox. Let's get right to it. What's up, guys? Week six. Let's go. Let's get right back to it. Make some money this weekend. Had a good weekend last week. Had a push on the team card, 1-0-1. Uh, I personally went one and one. Me and Jesse both went one and one. Mackie with the big two and zero weekend. The, par- the parlay right couldn't hit, but we'll call it a two and zero weekend on the straight bets. I'm looking forward to a really good week this week. I'm excited for the NHL season to come back. I'm excited to get some talk in after our NFL talk here. But let's jump right into it with the first game: the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Philadelphia Eagles. We have the Buccaneers favored at minus seven, money line at minus two ninety five, and the over under set at fifty two and a half. You guys got anything good to talk about for this one? If this was a Sunday one o'clock game, I'd say Bucks minus seven. Bucks minus seven, without a doubt. But it's prime time. It's a night game. It's in Philadelphia. They're gonna harass Tom Brady. Eagles plus seven. I like Bucks to win this game, but it should be a good one. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. I like. I think Eagles could maybe get a lead early on. And that could kind of hinder into the final score of this game is if it can cover seven or not. Uh, looking at the over-under, the 52-and-a-half, Tampa Bay's defense hasn't looked good this year. Philly, they've been letting up a lot of points, but I don't know. I like Philly plus seven, but I think this could be a high-scoring game. It's a high total. I'd probably go ahead and take the over on that, though. It's prime time, like you said, Thursday night. I think they can hit the over with Philly plus seven. The over has hit five out of the last six meetings between these clubs. And we have the Eagles are 14 and five straight up in their last 19 games played on a Thursday night, including six straight up five and one against the spread in those six. All right. What do you think about this game, Jesse? You had the Eagles last week. I did have the Eagles last week. Good hit. I yeah, wasn't very confident. In I was that, not but... confident in that hit pick at all i'm, well, I'm glad you hit it yeah I saw... like I, I i'm glad you hit it i i liked the panthers if it was two and a half but eagles at three and a half i can't believe they won i love that pick i saw through the, the bull, you know the bullshit and <laughs> I, I got the right pick you know what i'm saying no but good pick i don't know about this game seven's a tough number if it was six and a half i'd be all over it but it doesn't look like that um it could move. It looks it, like it could move in six and a half. You're right. It's going you're towards right. six and a half. It is going towards six and a half. If it goes to six and a half, I, you might have to take the Bucks here. Going into Philadelphia, it's going to be a tough crowd. Mackie was, we were talking about it earlier. Mackie was saying it's going to be a tough crowd. They're ruthless. It's not easy to go into Philadelphia. Not at all. I think I like the over more than either one of the spreads. Kind of agree with you on that one. I think it's going to be a very high scoring game. Uh, I just don't like this game. Stay away from it. Yeah. I'll probably take something because I'm a degenerate, but <laughs> I don't like anything to bet like right now. Now there's hockey on, dude. Very excited for hockey. Football's on the back burner at this point. Just kidding. All right, let's move forward to the Miami Dolphins at the Jacksonville Jaguars. We have the Miami Dolphins favorited at minus three, the money line at minus 184, and the over under set at 47. With this Florida matchup, the Jags are now at 20 straight losses. The under has hit in seven of the last eight games between these clubs. And the Dolphins are 13-5 and five straight up in their last 18 games as the favorite. 6-0 and oh against the spread in their last six games played in week six. I like the Dolphins here, minus three. Um, I saw that stat. It was like games played in London. Huff, what is that? Yeah, I said it last week. It was the money line favorites are twenty six and one. Now you can say twenty one six and one with the Falcons winning last week. Uh, the spread was seventeen and ten for the favorites. Um, now eighteen and ten. So, yeah, I think I like um, Miami minus three as well. It's hard to disagree with a trend like that when they're going over there. I don't think the Jaguars are going to have much going for them on offense, really, or defense. That wide receiver, Chenault, does look good, but I don't know. And the I like Jacksonville's running back, Robinson. Yeah, he's good. He's the best part of that team right now. Yeah, he's sure. they he has a lot of upside, but I don't know. That defense can't they can't stop anything. So even with two out, I think Dolphins cover three. Low scoring game though. I I 
I think the under will hit. Yeah, I think under 47 for sure. I agree with that. Dolphins minus three in the under. I think Dolphins might be on my individual card. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see there later. Next game we got is the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. We got the Colts favorited at minus 10. Money line at minus 480 and the over under at 43 and a half. You guys got anything good about this one? I like the Texans here. The Texans have been covering all season. Yeah, they have been. And they looked good last week. I said last week, I said the the Patriots are not the team that deserves eight and a half. And when I logged on Sunday, it was nine and a half. I was like, no way. I I took Texans. I didn't, I didn't bet that. I didn't bet that game, but they were winning. I thought they were going to win outright. Dude. I'll and take Nicole, ten, I'll take Texans plus ten here. It yeah. looks like it's gonna go to ten and a half. If it goes ten and a half, I'd hammer ten and a half. Yeah, well, Colts aren't very good either. They, yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's the ten point spread. See a lot of value in the Texans. Yeah, plus ten. Even if it goes, to, I mean, ten and a half's in our favor. I'll take ten and a half. All right, and looking into the next game on Sunday, we got the Green Bay Packers visiting the Chicago Bears. The Packers are coming in at minus four and a half, minus two oh five on the money line, and the over under sitting at forty four and a half. Um, personally, Packers, we had them last week on the team card. They got that push against the Bengals. That was definitely the trap game of the week. We didn't lose money on it, so we can't be mad. But it should have been. They tried to make the trap yeah, game they, of the week. It was and... so. That was the most stressful game ever. I swear to God, that thing was. That game was insane watching all that missed field goals and what was there five five in a row or something like oh that. oh my god that was in three minutes or something like that yeah, it was it insane was like an absurd stat but i don't know i like i like packers minus four and a half bears look good last week they beat the raiders outright bears didn't look good raiders just looked awful i mean I, i'm saying that that leads into what i'm gonna say here i think packers go into chicago i think they cover four and a half and i actually like the over here 44 and a half the Bears simply just don't play well against the Packers. The Bears are 1 and 10 straight up in their last 11 games at home versus Green Bay. And the Packers are 18 and 5 straight up in their last 23 games when playing on the road against Chicago. So they're covering that spread. Looking at Packers minus 4 and a half. I'm liking it. 4 and a half's a weird spread. It really is. You don't know I don't know what to think about it. How many games How many games does someone win by 5? That's a great question. I mean, honestly, probably more than you would think. But, like, it's just like... like what's that score? 26, 21? Yeah. That's the only be. score I can think of that happening. I mean, like... 28. Dude, like... 23. Weird things. All happen. right, I'm thinking about weird it Weird things now. happen in games, bro. Like... 23, 20... Or 31, 26. All right. 31, 26 is a popular one, I feel like. I think 28, 23 is more popular. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> I have no proof to back that up, so <laughs> I can't defend my argument. I just think that. <laughs> all right, next game, we got Chiefs versus Washington football team. Chiefs coming in at minus six and a half, minus 275 on the money line, and over under set at 55 and a half. We got a high over under here, obviously, with the Chiefs. What do you guys think here? I don't think the Chiefs cover this. On the road? I don't. I, I mean, it's I know. Sh- it's been shifting towards Washington's favor. Yeah, the line did start at minus seven. I know that. Yeah, I don't know. I they need to win games. They're they're two and the three. The Chiefs it's are simply, getting desperate. It's simply getting to the point where you have to win games. And I mean, they, they, whenever the Chiefs like they, I don't know if Mahomes has been in this situation yet. Really, with this kind of team, I know he hasn't because they've been fourteen and two and thirteen and three, but. I think they have what they it, they need to go into this game and win by seven. It just depends if their defense can hold them to a lead. You know what I mean? That like they haven't been able, their defense hasn't been able to stop anything. That defense. It is was so it brutal. was exposed last week against Buffalo at home in the first half. Uh, me and Jesse had the Chiefs. Mackie knew Mackie liked the Bills. He took them straight up. Yes, sir. But um, I think the Chiefs cover that six and a half here. I don't have much faith in Washington. But I, I'm I won't I probably won't be betting this or unless I do I will tease it lower, but I don't know. I think either Chiefs at six and a half is just a tough number. The Chiefs are two thirteen and one against the spread in their last sixteen games. 
but they're 7-0 and against the spread in their last seven games against Washington. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Pat Mahomes puts up 45, 50 points this game. Washington is not going to keep up offensively. They have Taylor Heineke. He's not a bad quarterback. He can't put up 40 points in a game. Yeah, I think here, Chiefs cover here. Yeah, hearing a stat like that, I mean, I like I like the Chiefs now a little more. Six and a half is not looking so bad. I mean, it's just a touchdown. Think yeah. about it against like Philly. They put up 42 points. They yeah. just couldn't keep up. True, true. This next one I like a lot. We got the Minnesota Vikings going into Carolina. Huff's game of the week. Playing the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Panthers plus one, plus 102 on the money line. Vikings minus 120. Pretty even game here. Uh, Over-under is 46 and a half. I'll say right off the bat, I like the Panthers straight up at home. I think the wrong team's favored. They're getting McCaffrey back. Um, I think the Panthers look good all season. I just think – I don't have much faith in Minnesota as a team. They're a very inconsistent offense and defense. And plus on the road, I just like Carolina to win this game at home. Yeah, Minnesota's brutal on the road too. Yeah. Like I'm not sure if Gilmore's playing in this game or not. I need to look that up. I like the Panthers here as well. I think they're at home. They're better at home. Vikings are bad on the road. I don't know why they're not favored here. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't make sense much for me. I think, I think the like I said, wrong team's favorite. If they want to have a one-point spread, that's fine. But I think it should be Panthers minus 120 on the money line. I'll be happy to take it at plus 102. I think this is an interesting one, but I'm going to go with the home dog here, the Panthers money line as well. Yeah, and I'm seeing right here, Stefan Gilmer is expected to be back week seven. Uh, I didn't know he was. he had an injury with his quadriceps. Where's no idea. Where is your quadriceps on your body? It's your quad. You know? like it's, uh, yeah, it's your quad. I, I think. didn't know that was a word for that. Interesting. <laughs> the more you know. You learn something new every day, right? Exactly, right? Now you're smarter, huh? All right, next we have the Los Angeles Chargers at the Baltimore Ravens. We've got the Ravens favored at minus three. Money line at minus 162 and the over-under at 52. You know, we all love saying good teams win, great teams cover. The Chargers are 4-1 and one against the spread this season and 8-1 and one against the spread in their last nine games. Yeah, the Chargers were overlooked for a while, and I think that's why their record against the spread is so good. But I still like them here. I think the Ravens are good, but they break down at too many points. So they can't really break down against the Chargers and expect to cover a spread or win a game. I like the Chargers money line plus 136 here. If you want to be safe about it, take the plus three. I like the Chargers money line too. Uh, there's a couple things I'll say about the Ravens. They have won. They're what? Four, four and, one? and one. They're four and one. All right. They've won a game on a 66 yard doink field goal to the Lions. And another game last week, a, co- a crazy comeback. A crazy comeback against the Indianapolis Colts on Monday night. The Ravens have shown they can win games. I mean, it's a coin flip on a field goal when it's 66 yards and you got Justin Tucker. I mean, good chances that he's making it if it's inside that. But Also, Justin Tucker is a 99 in Madden now. <laughs> yeah, it was like for a limited time or something, but I don't know. It could still be. I don't know. I haven't played Madden in the past couple of days. That's funny. But, I mean, yeah, I like the Chargers to win this game, go on the road into Baltimore. I'm not sold on Baltimore yet. Like, when people are saying who are the best teams in the AFC, right now I'm saying Buffalo, no like, no doubt. I don't even – I'm still I, going Chiefs. Yeah, I, I'm still taking the Chiefs to beat the Ravens, even if it's in Baltimore in the playoffs. Yeah. No, I'm not taking anybody against the Chiefs exactly. in the playoffs. Chiefs are getting in the playoffs. Like, I don't care if they're two – what are they, two and three? Two and three. They, um, but it, the, the division is definitely not a given. That division is tough right now. Yeah. Chargers are 4-1. and one. They're last in the division right now. Yeah, they are. I'm with you on that one, Huff. I'm not sold on the Ravens either. I think the Chargers are going to take this. Plus three gives some security, but maybe sprinkle a little on the money line. I don't think that'd be a terrible idea. Next up, we got Bengals, Lions. Lions coming in. Oh, excuse me. Bengals coming in at minus three and a half. Minus 200 on the money line. The over under at 47 and a half. Um, what's your opinion on the Bengals? They're five and zero against the spread and straight up 
in their last five games on the road against Detroit. I, I like Joey B. I think he's good. I think he has a lot of potential. I just I just don't think that team around him is good enough, and I, I don't know how their they're... offensive line sucks and their defense. Like... I mean, like what a game last week though against yeah. the Packers. They held in every single player. Did you say on that what team. a game or won a game? What a game. Okay, I was gonna say there's a big difference. Yeah, every single player <laughs> on that team held. It was their... a good game. I mean, it was a crazy game. They but... all held their own. I mean, the offensive line looked good. The defense looked good. I like maybe, Bengals here. Maybe they're better than I thought. I don't know. I like Bengals here. Detroit has so much heart, though. You see, last week, yeah, they've lost. They've had so many heartbreaking losses this year. Uh, it's uh, uh, that's another thing. They're a team that covers. They gotta win like sooner or later, right? Do you do you like three and a half? If I'm taking Detroit here, I'm taking their money line. Nah, n- no, because Detroit covers spreads. They just lose games. You're right. Detroit three and a half. I won't be touching this game. I think the Bengals win. It could be a, a late field goal that wins it. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. Three and a half seems. It's looking like it's going to four. Right on the line. It might. Yeah, it does look like it's moving to four. And let's move on to our next one: the Los Angeles Rams at the New York Giants. We got the Rams favored at minus nine and a half. And another one o'clock game we got going is the Los Angeles Rams at the New York Giants. We got the Rams favored at minus nine and a half. The money line at minus 480 and the over-under set at 48 and a half. Normally the Giants cover, but they do not have Daniel Jones. They do not have Saquon Barkley. They don't don't have Kenny Galladay. They don't really have anybody else good on their team. Yeah, I mean, they're banged up. You look at the Rams coming into this game. They look like, obviously, the better team. They're getting favored by nine and a half for a reason. The defense, I think, is going to be able to stop the Giants, all their backups. the I'm looking at the list of guys that are out right now. Slayton's questionable. Jabril Pepper's questionable. Daniel Jones, questionable. Barkley's out, you said. Yeah, yeah like, Barkley's out at least. I don't have much faith in the Giants in this game, even getting nine and a half. So, give me the Rams. What's the total? 48 and a half? Yeah. I like. I think I like that under. I don't like over unders. I'm not. I wouldn't bet it. I just like to say it for conversation. I like it to be a low. I think it'll be a low scoring game, but I do think the Rams cover nine and a half. Probably not going to bet on it, but I I agree. Also agree, and that segues us into the Arizona Cardinals at the Cleveland Browns. We have the Browns favored at a minus three. The money line at minus one seventy six, and the over under at forty nine and a half. Huff, what do you think? I like the Browns at home here. I know the Cardinals are. 5 and 0, undefeated. They're coming into this game with uh, a plus 3 on the road. I think the Browns get the job done at home by 3 or more maybe cover that hopefully. But I think the upside with the Browns right now is the defense how they've looked in the I mean last week they didn't look too hot giving up all those yards but That's just throughout the, though. yeah, throughout this season, I mean that yeah, that game was just an absolute shootout and the offense was able to keep up I didn't have faith in the Browns' offense before that game, really, and that showed that Baker and they can keep he can keep them in games. Yeah, I think if you can get this at minus three, or if you can even buy a point, get it two and a half. I think the Browns are a lock. But yeah, I'd like if it goes two and a half higher to three and a half. I don't. I will, it's so possible that this game comes down to a last second field goal. I mean, Cardinals got to lose at some point. I would recommend that go to the two and a half. I think it's worth the it's worth the little bit of the odds payout. Browns you know I mean? did prove a lot to me last week, though. The yeah, they look good. Side. We had the Chargers. I, I mean, Mackie had the Chargers in his pick. I took the Chargers separately, but I loved the Chargers last week, and that was a crazy game. Very good game. Let's keep going with the Las Vegas Raiders at the Denver Broncos. We have the Broncos favored at minus three and a half. Money line at minus 180 and the over under at 44 and a half. Anything good about this one? The Raiders are in shambles right now. They lose their coach after all the crazy emails coming out. Yeah. Crazy. Awful game last week. They're just not playing well. Yeah. With that being said, I think the Raiders come out in this game confident and looking to prove something. Divisional matchup in Mile High, Denver. I don't have too much faith in the Broncos here. I, I like the Raiders at three and a half, plus three and a half to be specific. I'm surprised it's three and a half. Looks like it's going to move to three. Three, yeah. So 
What do you like here, Jesse? I think I like Raiders three and a half here because I don't think Broncos are going to come out very strong here. Three and a half is a tough. The only thing Broncos have going for them here is they're at home, obviously. But Raiders look good. Divisional matchup. Even though they, I mean, Gruden just got fired. I like, I like the Raiders plus three and a half. I like Broncos money line. I would do, I'm not touching this game anyway. So Las Vegas is six and one against the spread in their last seven games when playing Denver. Give me Raiders plus three and a half. All right, next game. We got another 4 o'clock game. We got the Dallas Cowboys going up to Foxborough to play the New England Patriots. Cowboys coming in as a minus 3.5 favorite, a minus 196 on the money line, and 51.5 is going to be set at the uh, total points. Um, Coming into this game, Cowboys, they look good this season so far. Patriots were down to the Texans last week. Texans were a big underdog, 9.5 it closed that, I think. Uh, Patriots ended up winning that game by a field goal. Mac Jones looked good. Patriots looked good. But giving up a lot of points, I don't think you can play like that against Dallas, even though it's at home. Um, I like Dallas if you can get them at minus three. Dallas is the only undefeated team against the spread left. I'm going to ride that. I'm going to ride that as well. I think Dallas minus three and a half. It It looks like a trap to me because it's like, why are they only three and a half point favorites? Patriots just got by the Texans by the skin of their teeth. They don't really look too good to me. I think Dallas comes out at least a 10-point win here. I agree with you there. I'm really excited for this one. I think it's going to be a good game. I think the Cowboys are going to come out and come out strong early and just keep it rolling the whole game. That being said, we got the Seattle Seahawks at the Pittsburgh Steelers for the Sunday night primetime game. We have the Steelers favorited at minus four and a half, money line at minus two twenty, and the over under at forty two and a half. Russell Wilson seems to be out with an injury here, so let's see if these stats hold up. The Seahawks are twelve and five against the spread in their last seventeen games when playing as the underdog. On the flip flop, we have the Steelers are eleven two and one against the spread and twelve and two straight up in their last fourteen games played in October. What are the Seahawks going to do here without Russell Wilson? Um, not much. <laughs> yeah, not much. They look, Gino looked good coming into that game last week. I think it just had a lot of hype around him. You know what I mean? Like coming into a game, he got all the adrenaline rush, but he's going to, he's coming on the road this week, Sunday night game. The lights are on. I mean, I th- I like the Steelers here. I do. I think they come out four and a half. I like the four and a half. Honestly, I think Steelers win this game by six to 10 points. I don't have much faith in Seattle without Russell Wilson. Uh, they got guys like DK Metcalf, but I don't trust Geno Smith to get him the ball, especially with the guys that we have on defense and uh, the Steelers. But weird over under 42 and a half. I feel like that's really low, but it's like the under's favored. So that's what's throwing me off here. Huff, you are going to this game, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think Pittsburgh defense abuses Geno Smith all night. I don't know how I feel about the four and a half. It could be a good game. I think Pittsburgh comes out on top, but I don't I don't like the spread. And now let's jump into the Monday primetime game, eight o'clock Buffalo Bills at the Tennessee Titans. We have the Bills favorited at minus five and a half. The money line set at minus two forty five in the over under set at fifty four and a half. The over is ten and three in Tennessee's last 13 games as the underdog. And the Bills are 13-3 and three against the spread in their last 16 games. Do we like the high over of 54.5 here? And do you like the Bills? I actually like the Titans plus 5.5. I was just thinking that, and I don't know why, but I like the Titans it's plus 5. a Monday night game. It's going to be a good one in Tennessee. They're both really good teams. They're going to make it interesting. It's going to be a close game. They're not going to blow them out. I kind of agree there. I think the Bills come out on top. I just don't think <sighs> it's I don't think it's a slaughter fest like it should be if it was a 1 o'clock game. What are you thinking of? I'm thinking too much. I don't know. I like it's Titans. like, Titans I like the Titans, but the Bills look so good. I just bet against the Bills last week. Do I really want to bet against the Bills two weeks in a row? <laughs> This time in prime time, it'd be my only 
bet I'd be watching. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Bills. I might tease that game with another one from Sunday. I think that's a good idea. Keep that rolling. With I don't like five and a half. It's a it's weird. Just, it's even worse than four and a half. Yeah. I mean, if you're the only plus out of that is that the Bills are covered, like somehow because over time they could still cover. It's yeah. the only advantage of that. You know yeah. what I mean? All right, and let's get into the picks for the week. On the team card, we're going to start off with we got the Chargers plus three. We got Cowboys minus three and a half. We got the Packers minus four and a half. And then our big play of the day, our two unit bet, is we're going on the Panthers money line. We like them at home. We're going to, we're going to put two units on that. And uh, for my individual picks of the week, I like the Chiefs minus six and a half. And I'm going to do a uh, two-leg teaser for you. I'm bringing out the Raiders plus three and a half. I'm taking it to plus nine. And I'm taking the Steelers from minus four and a half to plus one. That's going to bring the two-legger to minus 120. I think there's a lot of value in both of those picks and the team card picks. I'm excited for this weekend. I like it, Huff. Um, my individual card, I got the Chiefs minus six and a half, and I got the Dolphins minus three. I also do, did a little parlay if you want to have a little fun. I did Bucks money line minus two ninety five, the Rams money line minus four eighty, Bengals money line minus two hundred, and the Bills money line minus two forty five. Uh, throw a hundred dollars, you win two hundred forty one. So let's ride. I'm liking both your little special th- gigs this week, boys. Huff your teaser at five and a half points. That's a great move. Mackie, your parlay is looking pretty legit. Two forty one. I'm excited for that. My only individual pick this week is Dolphins minus three. I'm riding with Mackie. Really excited for that one. I think they're going to take the Jags in London and take care of them. And stay tuned for the uh, team card on Instagram. I might be adding a couple individual or anytime touchdown scores to my picks as well. None of the odds are posted as to when we're recording right now on a Wednesday. But as we get closer to the week, I might be looking at a couple anytime touchdown scores for the Sunday. Looking forward to that. And stay tuned for the NHL segment coming up next. And another thing we're going to start to talk about with the NHL coming back last night, uh, we're going to get into some hockey talk with three former hockey players. We definitely have some some opinion, and that's something that we're going to look forward to getting into for you guys. You know, when we look at the games last night, we had the Pittsburgh Penguins going down to Tampa Bay, we a banged up Pittsburgh team going into Tampa Bay. They were raising the banner last night. Um, Penguins came out. They looked good. They, they were out with, uh, without Sid and Gino, Gensel too. Uh, I got the Penguins at plus one and a half last night in a little parlay with the Vegas money line. Vegas ended up winning outright in a closer game than it should have been with the the newly born Seattle Kraken. Um, they looked pretty good. They, they did. Good they, they looked. They they came to play the first period. They buried themselves a hole that it was hard to get out of. But after that, they picked it up. They were looking great. It was fun to watch them. It really was. Yeah, yeah it was and nice. Those to see jerseys them. are so sick, dude. I love those. Yeah, uniforms. I think they're. I think they're a little. Uh, but I like them a they lot. They tried a little too hard with them. But I, I mean, like yeah, them. that's the new team, like the new age type yeah. thing. They're going with it's like nice. the bright I like colors. Them. I mean, I'm look at Vegas. Look what them. Vegas is going for. Like yeah. that metallic gold. Like uh-huh. I like Vegas's. Yeah. Yeah, but. I mean, back to the Penguins going. I mean, they look good. Tampa Bay, they didn't look too hot last night. Vasilevsky was off his angles. I mean, he only let up, what, really three with the three empty netters on top of it. But really, I, I don't think they looked, they looked, they looked awful last yeah. night. They did not look like they came up uh, yeah. winning a cup. Tampa Bay did not look good. You know, Pens came out flying. I enjoyed watching the Pens last night. The Pens defied some trends last night. Tampa Bay was five. And O straight up in its last five games at home and five and O in its last five games when playing at home against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh came right in and they showed them great game, great matchup, six to two, some empty netters in there. It was a very interesting game. Them pulling the goalie there at six minutes and one second left. Very interesting move. I think we're going to see that a lot more this season, though. We were talking about it earlier. You guys agree? Yeah, teams are going to take their chances. I mean, if you're if you're down three with five minutes left. There's no use waiting until two minutes. I mean, you're not. I mean, the chance of you scoring three goals in th- in two minutes are not good. But all righty, and let's look at some of the future bets for the NHL. We're looking at the Stanley Cup 2021-2022, the outright winner, with the favorite coming in as the Colorado Avalanche at plus five hundred. The Tampa Bay Lightning looking to three peat is the second most favorite at plus six fifty. Vegas Golden Knights plus 700, Toronto Maple Leafs plus 1100, and Boston Bruins rounding out the top five at 14 to 1. 
Um, and at six, not not too far behind, you got the Islanders at fifteen to one. Um, we're each going to give you a little sample of what we think the the cup could look like come the end of the playoffs in the NHL. Me personally, I can see. I like Vegas coming out of the West. Um, they showed what they can do against Colorado last year. They got Colorado's number, and Colorado loses their goalie to Seattle. Um, I like Vegas. I mean, Vegas lost Flurry, but I like Vegas to come out of the West this year. And personally, I either I don't know if I can pick out against Tampa Bay, but I don't know. It's so hard to do it twice, let alone three times. But give me Vegas versus Tampa Bay. Not a bad pick. Um, I think I disagree with you on Colorado. I think. It's going to come down to Colorado versus Vegas. Yeah, obviously. absolutely. I, that's going to be the if, – if it lines up that way, that should be the Western Conference Final like it was last year. It was just in the second round. Yeah, exactly. And then – well, actually, Montreal ended up winning. But. Montreal shouldn't have been in the final. The way those playoffs were last year, I hate, that was, was so stupid how up. it worked up. Yeah. The fact that Vegas and Colorado couldn't play each other for to go to the Cup, that was so stupid to me. that NHL missed out on a huge opportunity for that. And then – so, yeah, so I like Colorado coming out of the West. Gonna be a good. That'll be a good Western Conference. I like Colorado. Finals. I'm a huge McKinnon fan. Yeah, Colorado. I love McKinnon. I love Colorado. And then I'm gonna go with the Islanders here. I think the Islanders are a young, fast. I was thinking the Islanders. Islanders are good, and you know they can go on a run. They, they sure they, they got Parise. Yeah, I like I like both. Of them. I could literally see it. those are. I'm um, my. I like Vegas and Colorado's tough. If those two that I could see that being the conference finals for each series. Last year it was what Tampa Bay versus Islanders. It was that. I could yeah. see a rematch, and this year it's going to be Vegas, Vegas is going to play Colorado. Colorado again, but this time it's going to be the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, I like that. I like it. And we just each picked the two completely different teams to win it. That's funny. I myself think Vegas has a good chance. I'd like to see the Kraken do some damage over there, but they didn't look so strong. In that first game, first period rather, but then coming off, they did. So I'm hoping to see better performance out of them to continue. For the Eastern Conference, like you said, Huff, it's tough. I don't I don't think Tampa's going to be doing it a third time. I don't like the Leafs to do it. I don't know if the Bruins can do it. I don't know. All the Eastern Conference teams in those, you know, that top five or six... Not impressing me. I'm not yeah, I sold agree. on any of them. I there's agree. another there's another team that I'm looking at in the Pittsburgh Penguins if they can get hot and if Tristan it's it's shown if they have the team and if we can get a hot goaltender in the playoffs. I mean, we won back to back cups and won in 09, but that's neither here nor there. I think we could do it again at plus twenty two hundred. That was such a Pittsburgh thing to say. I'm not over here saying Rangers at plus twenty two hundred because I know that it's not logical. That's my value pick. Yeah. <laughs> That's his value pick. And that's going to do it for us here on this episode of Hit the Books Podcast. Be sure to check us out on our various social media platforms. Instagram at hitthebooks.pod. Twitter at hitthebooks underscore pod. Website at hitthebookspod.com for all the latest on Hit the Books. And be sure to always study hard. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER.